today, we're gonna to talk about how to tidy up your ads manager like Marie Condon. Because guys, what I'm really passionate about is sparking joy in the world through tidying up your Facebook ads manager. So today we're gonna to cover off on three things. Number one, we're going to look at how do you structure your campaigns, the structure. Then number two, we're going to look at the naming conventions that you use. And then lastly, and the most important and the largest one, we're going to look at your ads. We're going to look at, first of all, the ad images that you use, the structure of the copy that you use, and then also we're going to take a look at and just delve into a little bit more around the headlines so that you can spark joy in your ads when you're going through and creating your ad campaigns. Now, of course, before we can start doing any ads, I'm gonna jump in the computer in just a second, but of course, we need to thank the computer for all the ads that it allows us to do because without it, we couldn't do ads. So, thank you, computer, for all the ads. Sparking joy. Let's jump in and let's structure our ads and tidy them up like Marie Conan. Welcome in, guys, to we're inside now tidying up your ads manager like Marie Conda. So, I wanna show you one that's probably not the best and then an ideal setup as well because we all know that you can come in here and if you have too much stuff going on, you feel stressed, overwhelmed, you have no idea what's going on. So you wanna keep it clean, tidy, nice as Marie Kondo would say so that it sparks joy every time you go into your ads manager. So we can see here, as I mentioned in the uh, first part of the video, the most important thing to look at is structure. So you can see here, there is some structure to what we're doing, but there's not really, this is an old ad account of ours, right? So there's a lot of different ones happening. Now I'll show you what it would look like if it was structured. So it's very easy to see content you're running, the leads you're generating, and the most simple and effective way to relate to them. So let's look at our one of our current accounts. Now what you can see here is very simply what we have. We have some video views, we have our testimonial boosting that we do, our phone funnel that we're running, um, a test that we're running, then we have three levels of our video views from our mogul method, so we have all the information there. Then we have our lead generation, our uh, uh, perfect ad template. Then we have our, this is marketing live broadcasting. Very simply, we have everything we can see at the drop of a hat what's happening. This one down here is something that we're running uh, slightly different, which I'll talk about another time. So, and if we look at it, everything is run within here. So if I change this to lifetime, you'll see this is our leads for this week. But if we look at this, we run everything in there. We don't duplicate, we don't change things. We keep it simple and nice and tight. So you can see in here, we've had 2,600 leads come through this one. <clears throat> and you'll see why once we go into it, because the next most important thing is how you name them. Because here, I know exactly what's happening for each one of these. In here, you can see that it's a little bit confusing. There's like, okay, what's this post? Attention business owners, there's just initials. Like what do all these things mean? They're all different. Whereas here, straight off the bat, we can tell exactly what's going on. So I always like to use pipes, uh, as they're called, as our splitter, as what's going to show you the difference between the two of them. So I can say this one is my video views. It's a testimonial boost, it's the phone funnel. Conversions, we have video views and the different levels. I know what each of them means, part of our mogul method. All right, then we have our perfect data template. We're bidding for conversions, it's our old style setup. Then we have, this is marketing live, again, our content boost. So I can see very simply what the name is, but let's look a little bit deeper into the ad sets, because this is where the naming can start to get really confusing. People can get stressed, overwhelmed. Oh my God, there's so many names. All you need to be able to do is at the drop of a hat go, cool, I know what that means to me because everyone can teach you different naming conventions, but it doesn't mean anything to you. If it doesn't spark joy in you, then it doesn't matter. So that's why we want to ensure that when we go into it, you name it something that makes sense to you. So have a look here. Let's have a little look-see. Now, we can see here, exactly what is happening at each of these levels. And I know what they mean. So here, this is our website visitors, right? We have our website visitors and we're running a video to them. This one we're targeting, because I love TV show ballers, entrepreneurs and ballers and Dwayne Johnson. That's our targeting for this one. Then we have our 1% lookalike audience of our page engagers. We have a five second video that's been classified as heavy text. And then we have a 1% lookalike of our, our page engagers from our podcast. And it's the image of a shocked lady. 
So straight off the bat, I know exactly what each one of these means. We've got some stuff we tested in the US and Canada, but straight away, I know this one is converting, great. $1.47 leads, 223 of them. It's our page engages from the podcast with the shocked image. I know straight away that that is exactly what is working. Great, right? Simple. So for me, again, the only thing I would have done differently is because I had uh, someone else set these up for us in our team and we're going through the training is I would have just had a pipe there because I like pipes. It keeps it cleaner for me as opposed to a dash. But I will take this results every day of the week. So now that you have your naming convention, it's just really what it is to you. The other thing you could add on there is male, female, the age bracket as well. So you want to see at the drop of a hat exactly which one is working, why it's working, which audience it is. So you can go, okay, I'm going to change this, chop this, do this, extrapolate this, make it happen. Right? Now, what we want to do is we want to go down to the last level, most important level, which we'll be looking at our ads. So here, I can see it says in here, we've had, we had two different versions of the shot. Um, one is a face, one is a picture, and it says long ad red, right? So I know straight away, number one, <clears throat> that we have used the same copy because we don't have a copy variation written on there. So if we had written copy two, it would be a second version of our copy. If we had copy three, it would be a third version. So this is the same iteration, but it's a long ad, meaning that it is more vertical than horizontal. And it's red in color, right? It's got a bit of red color. <laughs> That's our way to distinguish between them. Um, so we open this one up and you will see exactly what it looks like. We've got them all lined up nicely, just like our t-shirts, if you watch the tidying up. So it's long ad, red in color. We have the same headline that we use, right? We use very similar headlines. Um, so is one of the three things that you should be looking at is number one is your headline, and then you've got your imagery, et cetera, and then also a call to action on what's most important for you when it comes to your ads. Right, so you can test it out. Your copy, as I said, this is running the same copy. Test out your headline. You can test out the images. So all three things you can test and you need to have written in here exactly which one it should be. Now for us, we always like to run one ad set, one ad. It gives us the best possible way to identify the distribution, identify exactly what's happening within the ads, and also make sure that the budget goes the furthest. Because we don't want Facebook deciding what to spend. We, you and I, we want to make sure that we choose how it should be spent instead. So once you can manage these three levels, everything is lined up nicely you've got your identifiers you know what the structure is you know how to name it and then you know how to look at your ads and your audiences and and identify at a drop of a hat which one's which that is how you can tidy up your ads manager like marie kondo so you can ensure that you have it all set up nicely you have it all lined up in a row so when you go into your ads manager it sparks joy rather than stresses frustrates you overwhelms you we want to make sure that you are ridiculously happy every time you go into your ads manager so you can get better results, scale your leads, and get more business. All right, guys, that's what we want for you. So hopefully you can see in here how to tidy up your ads manager a little bit. Try and keep everything into your campaigns at the moment. There's a few new changes I'll do a video on and potentially things that may throw a little spanner in the works there. But uh, for now, that's exactly what you need to do and focus on. So guys, I'm just going to jump back out of the computer and we will wrap this up. Okay, guys, thank you so much. Appreciate you tuning in and finding out exactly how you can tidy up your ads manager like Marie Condon. As always, if you like this video, please give us a thumbs up. Comment down below what you liked best, if there's anything else that we can do to help you when it comes to your ads. And always, always, always subscribe so you get to find and see these videos first before anyone else. As always, I'm Kim. You've been awesome. We'll see you next time.